Hello, it's Chris from My Stamp Lady. I'm so glad you're joining me for this Colorful Seasons card video tutorial with a few additional dies. So let's get started. Okay, so from the Colorful Seasons, I will be using the Slingback Chair, but there are also um, there are also different seasonal things like fall and winter included in this set. So let's pull this chair out because I'm going to be using that. And in a way you won't expect. And then some oval layers. These layering dies, they come in circles, squares, and ovals. The best dies I have ever purchased. And then this is a special promotional item right now. And it is the seasonal... Stitched Seasons Framelits. So it's available through the month of August of 2018. Unless, maybe, hopefully, it'll come back sometime. So let me grab that die I need from there. Okay, so this particular card is um, kind of a fun, you know, the feeling of summer is starting to feel like it's on its way out here. So I thought this card would be a good one for that. We're going to start. I've already cut my card base. It's five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored at four and one quarter inches. So I'm going to set that aside because I'm really not doing anything else with that. And then I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is four and one or uh, four inches by five and one quarter. This is the Pinewood Planks, which is the one of the dynamic folders, which is really thick. And you can see that it's a six inch wide folder and it's gotten caught a couple of times on the edge of my big shot. So you want to be sure to put this important hinge edge, put it in first so we don't get caught on the side of the big shot. And you only need one acrylic plate with this particular folder. So let's line it up the best we can with the sides of our Big Shot platform. And I've taken off the little thin die adapter. We don't need that with this one. And I'm going to run this through my Big Shot, which I have just to the side here. Okay, so here is my piece of embossed Pinewood Planks paper. It is just beautifully embossed. It's nice and thick and you get a nice deep image. I can set that aside for a couple of minutes here while I do some other stamping. So now I'm going to work on that little sling back chair. And I am using my Stamparatus, which is a positioning tool from Stampin' Up. And so I am got it set up already. I have other videos about the Stamparatus and I will be making more. But right now I have a photopolymer set, so I have my black um, little insert pad. And then underneath I also have a piece of thick... Um, little cardstock or chipboard, that's what I was looking for, and that is going to help give me a little more pressure. I like a little more than what comes with it. So I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. It's at least two and a half by three and a half inches. This might be a little bit off just because I grabbed kind of a little bit of a um, scrap to do this, but it should be at least two and a half by three and a half inches. I have inked up the background of my slingback chair, and I'll pick that up, and you can see that that's stamped there. Now I'm gonna pull this plate out and put in my other plate that has the other piece in the two-step stamping piece, and I've already positioned it so that it lines up. As long as my cardstock is in the corner of the Stamparatus, it should line up correctly. So let's ink up that with lovely lipstick, and then we drop that down, and we've got, voila, there we go. I've got my slingback chair and it is all lined up and ready to go. Just clean that off for me. Okay, I can set that aside. And then I have my ovals. This is from that layering oval die set. And I'm going to cut this out. So I have my Big Shot platform. This is the magnetic one, the one that will hold the the dies in place. I love, love, love my magnetic platform. That's what I use 90% of the time. And then I'm going to put another acrylic plate on top, constantly rotating those to keep them flat. I can set this aside and I need a quick little scalloped mat to coordinate with that. I could have done this at the same time and saved a little bit of time, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead at the time. Okay, let's run this through. Before I put this together, I'm going to add a little bit of blue around the bottom. And what I've done is I've used the Prussian blue from my Brusho set. This is one of my favorite ways is using the Brusho to add a little bit of color to um, backgrounds, to little spots. You can certainly use ink with an aqua painter, 
but I have decided that um, the brush -o with a paintbrush is a really quick and easy way to do this. This is just a little piece of oven liner you put in the bottom of your oven to collect spills, but it works great for resisting any type of water and glue and types of things like that. So we're going to add a blue background with this piece of two and three quarters by three and three quarters whisper white. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of blue to the bottom there. So I'm taking this Prussian blue and I don't want a lot because a lot, a little bit of brush -o goes a long way. And so then I just have a little jar and I put some water and I have a thick paintbrush. And then I'm just gonna activate my paint or the brush -o crystals by brushing over it. Now this does take a little bit of time to dry. So I have actually done one ahead of time, but before I move on, I'm just gonna use some of this excess to add a light bit of blue to the bottom of my chair here. There we go. I didn't want a lot of blue, so I just used a little bit of the over. So this will, I'm going back to this now, <laughs> this will take a little time to dry. So I could use a heat tool to dry that, but I've actually just done one ahead of time that I can work with right away so that we don't have to wait for that. So this is my blue background. This one I did the same way, it's just dried. I add a little bit of blue to the bottom of this chair and we're gonna set aside because it's not quite as wet and I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, so I can mat this blue onto a piece of balmy blue, the blue colored whisper white I should say. And this balmy blue is two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths typically go an eighth inch larger for most of my mats. I like a 16th inch mat going all the way around. And you know, it's not quite straight, so let me just straighten that out a little bit. And then we'll, we'll press it down really well once I have it positioned, there we go. Kind of give that and then flip it over and really rub it really nice and firmly to get that to stick. I like to press it over just in case I have some ink on my fingers or something that might rub and wreck that front. Okay, so now I have my background piece done so I can set that aside. We're letting our slingback chair dry and it's almost there, I didn't use a lot of water for that. And I want to make a little fence. So you can see I've already cut two of my fence pieces out and that fence piece is made with this chair from the die set. So I've positioned the chair so it's just below the top and then I run that through the big shot. So I place my magnetic platform, I put down my crumb cake piece and this crumb cake piece is one and a half inches by four and a half inches to get the three chair back tops out of it. And I'm gonna put on an additional acrylic plate and then I will put this through the big shot. Okay, so here is my third piece. And I've already cut out the other two, you saw them there. Oh, come on in, there we go. Okay, so now, and I didn't see this originally, I ran across it on Pinterest and I thought it was such a good idea. It's a fun way to make a little background for my little beach scene here. So I'm gonna take some to glue this down. I'm just gonna take, and I'm going onto my silicone mat here, and that way the ink, the glue, sorry, the adhesive, won't stick to where I don't want it to. And I can always take an adhesive remover and go in and get the rest of any adhesive that's there that I don't want there. But we're just gonna put that on there and put our little fence. Isn't this so cute? This is just like adorable. I had to try it when I saw it. I don't remember where I saw it. I saw it on a couple of cards and I thought it was such a fun idea. Looks like I'm gonna overhang a little bit. So with some paper snips, I will just snip that excess off. Okay. So I have a super cute little fence ready for my chair and for the rest of my scene. Okay, so next we're gonna do the sentiment. And with the sentiment, I have a two and a quarter by four inch piece of vellum cardstock. I'm inking up my image in lovely, lips, lovely lipstick, and I'm just going to stamp that on the center. I am using a stamp and pierce pad underneath because this is a photopolymer set. And the photopolymer, it helps to have a little bit of give from the stamp and pierce pad. Now this is vellum, it's a very um, non-porous, 
type of paper, and so it's going to take a bit of time for this to dry. If you want it to dry right away, you could use a clear embossing powder over it, but I'm just going to let it dry. So I've actually done one ahead of time that's already dry and I can touch and I won't smear it. I've taken the smallest label from that Stitched Seasons bundle, and we will run this through the Big Shot, a magnetic platform, an acrylic pad, and then I'll just place my little die over that, the smallest label, and we'll run that through. Okay, so there's my little die piece. Let's see how my slingback chair is doing. It's actually pretty good. So I will take my adhesive now, and we'll put some adhesive on there. Let's line that up with that lovely lipstick matte. Okay, pull in my pieces. We're getting nearly finished here. Okay, so we are going to put this lovely lipstick saying down here, and this is about where I want it. Vellum is a, a paper that makes it difficult to put an adhesive on the back because it can see through it. So what I've done is I've just taken a piece of toweling and I'm dabbing some of the liquid glue, the Tombow liquid glue on there, and then it will, as it dries, it's going to dry clear and it will disappear into the background just when there's not a big blob of it anywhere. So we'll put that down. And then I've got my chair image here. And we can put that down. And now let's pull that Pinewood Planks piece in. And we can put this entire piece here. I add just a little more of this liquid glue to it right here in the back of the vellum, just so that will stick down. And just by dabbing it on there, it's not gonna show through then. So let's place that here. Now I did not put it down to the back side or to the card base yet because I wanna wrap my linen thread around there. Okay, then I'm just gonna flip that over, burnish that a little bit and give it a little rub. Okay, so now I have a length of linen thread and we're going to just tie a bow to the right side here. Okay, so I have my linen thread in. I'm going to just place dimensionals across the back here. To finish this card off, I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool. This is coming up in the next holiday catalog. If you're currently a demonstrator, you can pre-order it. Um, otherwise, it will be available in the holiday catalog, and it is a wonderful, wonderful tool. I'm using the spatula end to just put down my little pearls from the Share What You Love um, pearl set, and it just draws your eye, and for me, it kind of finishes it. It completes that entire card. And so there you go. We did a lot of things in this card today. I used some brush made this fence from the chair back, and used some vellum there for that sentiment. So if you have any questions about what I've done, you can contact me, Chris, at MyStampLady.com. And all of the supplies are available in my online store at ShopWithMyStampLady.com. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy making this card.